Hey, what's up, it's here here. So welcome to another Alienware Aurora Gaming PC related video on my channel. Right, in this video, I'm going to talk about the power supply unit for that PC. Well, to upgrade and replace the existing power supply unit inside the case, it's pretty easy and simple things to do. However, there are some things you need to be aware of. In my experience, I actually tried two power supply units from two different manufacturers. One is the Corsair TX650M, another one is the EVGA 650GQ. Um, both of them are semi-module power supply units and both of them had a good efficiency rating at 80 plus gold. The price for both of them are pretty much the same as well. At the time I'm filming this video in the United States, the EVGA is currently a bit cheaper than the Corsair. It on sale for at $75 compared to the Corsair is at regular price of $90. In Canada, the price is pretty much the same as well. And they both only have like a dollar or two difference and the both of them is around 120 Canadian dollars. As of the build quality, I think the both power supply units are made equal good compared to each other and they all using 120 millimeters fans for cooling and they all using Japanese capacitors and as of the noise level I think both power supply unit are equally good as well they are pretty much in the same noise level when it's operating one good thing about Corsair is they offer seven years of warranty on their power supply units compared to the EVGA they only have five years of warranty even though I'm pretty sure both of the power supply units were last or just worked fine during the warranty period but still the longer the warranty it has is always better if you guys interested in in purchasing either of the power supply units i leave it link in description below so you guys can check it out just let you guys know those links are amazon affiliate link they don't cost you a penny but i do get some rewards from amazon if you do end up using that link to make a purchase which will also help me to grow my channel here and to make more videos for you guys and for people who do use the link to make a purchase and thank you very much for the support and in this video i'm just going to using the corsair tx 650m to do the demonstration for you guys all right let's get started of course, first we're gonna open up the case. I've actually did several demonstrations on my previous videos I show you guys how to open up the case. But if you don't know how to do that, you're welcome to check that in my previous videos. After we open up the case, now we can see the power supply units clearly. There are four screws that hold up the power supply units on that case. Just unscrew it. And there are another two screws that hold up the plate, which is in front of the power supply units. Unscrew that as well, remove the plate. And after that, we can easily take out the original power supply unit out of that case. Like I said, very simple and easy. And next, obviously we're gonna put our new power supply unit back in there. And just remember to also put the plate back on as well. You can use this screw that came with the new power supply unit, or you can use the original one. Doesn't matter, they're all the same, whichever you prefer. So after we put our new power supply unit in place, we want to connect all the necessary cables from the power supply unit to the motherboard and all other components. It depends on how many hard drive you have installed in your PC and the location of it. Well, in my case here, I get rid of the original mechanical hard drive and instead I got two SSDs in here. So I just need one SATA cable connecting the power from the power supply unit to those SSDs. Which on that single SATA cable, I have enough SATA connectors to power all my SSDs. We also need a PCIe cable for the GPU power as well. And this is one of the tricky things I mentioned earlier which on the motherboard it looks like a 8 pin connector and even if you put two 4 pins PCIe connector together and make it 8 pin it will not fit on that connector on the motherboard and the original connector on the original power supply unit also has an 8 pin connector but when you take a look carefully inside that connector it actually only wired for 4 pins so only 4 pins is active it means you just need to connect 4 pin PCIe connector to the GPU power socket and it will just work fine and also we will need another PCIe cable and later on we're going to use it on the graphic card okay there is a one thing that may or may not affect you it totally depends on if your alienware or a gaming pc that came with a dvd drive or not if your alienware or a gaming pc does come with a dvd drive and then because the dvd drive is a slim profile it is actually using a slim mini SATA cable connector on that dvd drive which in this case neither the corsair or evg power supply units have a such connector on their cables and as i know i've never seen any power supply units that actually has this kind of connector included in the box. And even if you actually take a look at the original power supply unit that come with the PC, you will find they actually jump wire a mini SATA connector from the regular SATA cable just for the DVD drive to work. I mean, unless you can do the same, otherwise the building DVD drive is doomed. Uh, so, you know, choose to use it or not use it, it's totally up to you now. So after we connect all the cables, make sure all the cables is connected to the right connectors, which is connected to the right components. And now, we want to test it out first before we starting to manage all those cables and zip tie them and make it look somewhat organized. And don't forget to put on the graphic cards back on the PCIe slot. And after that, we're just gonna swing down the power supply unit cage to close. And then we're gonna connect the PCIe cable on the graphic card. Well, if everything's good, then your PC should turn on and boot up the system normally. Well, if it's not, you're doomed. 
<laughs> no way, just kidding. All right, so that's the process of how to replace or upgrade the power supply unit inside the Alienware or our gaming PC. Like I said before, it's a very easy and simple things to do. Now you have a more powerful power supply unit in your PC now. Generally, the 650 watt PSU is enough for you to run very high specs configurations for a PC. No matter if you have the 7th gen, 8th gen, or 9th gen, or the future 10th gen Intel Core i7 processors, or maybe the i9 processor, even with the current RTX 2080, or the previous GTX 1080 or 1080 Ti. Even the original power supply units, which is 450 watts, can handle Intel Core i7 8700 or 87. 100K with GTX 1080 graphic cards. Or maybe your intention to upgrade the current power supply units in that PC is for you to using a new graphic cards, probably maybe a RTX 2060 or maybe 2070 or 2080. Well, if you're planning to use the RTX 2060, that I can tell you, you don't need a new power supply unit for that PC. Because the original power supply units is enough for you to run a RTX 2060. Just like what I did here. I actually ended up using the stock power supply unit inside a case and one of the reasons is because I still need to use that DVD drive and also I've upgraded my RAM from original 16 gigabytes to now 32 gigabyte with DDR4 running at the same clock speed of the stock one which is 2666 and like I said I've also upgraded my GPU with graphic cards to the current RTX 2060. And I'm also using the Cooler Master Liquid Cool System for my CPU as well. All of this is all powered on the stock original 450 watts power supply unit. And so far, I got zero problem at all. And even when everything's under load, I did a 3D mark testing, I did benchmark testing, all sorts of things, and stress test on the CPU, stress test on the GPU, and everything worked just fine. And I've even did a calculation on power usage for all of my components here in this PC. It only camps out at maximum drawing 330 watts to 380 watts max. So 450 watts power supply unit is enough for me to run everything here in this PC. And of course, I'm not talking about overclocking any of the stuff. I'm not doing overclock on this PC. That's also the reason why 450 watts is plenty enough for my PC here. But if you want to do overclock, then it's pretty much another story on this PC. And I wouldn't really suggest you to do overclock because you know the motherboard is not meant for overclocking on this PC. It's just pre-built. If you really want to do overclock, you might as well just you know build your own PC. But a light overclock, like slight overclock on this PC is okay. All right, thumbs up if you like the video. If not, click the thumb down twice. Anything you want to say, make comment below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers, guys. Yeah.